Howdy Windmillers! I'm going to show you very quickly, or as quickly as I can, how to create and also how to edit a route in Plotter route because I know the library has had to be removed for a short while. So this is going to be a very quick introduction to how I plot a new route and how I edit an existing route. I've been using Plotter route for quite a while, so this isn't the way. This is just one way, one way that I've learned how to do it. So this assumes that you're logged in, you've got your own account in Plotter route, and it also assumes that you will be using a laptop or a desktop PC with a mouse. Those things just make your life a lot easier. You could use a laptop with a trackpad, but if you had a mouse kicking around, that just makes your life easier. OK, so you can do it on mobile, but it's really not as intuitive on mobile, certainly not on a mobile phone. So save yourself a lot of bother and do this on your uh, cranky old PC. Just need an internet connection and a plotter route account, which is free. So once you've set up your account, we will be going to create and we're going to go to plot a route. OK. And it was going to say, where would you like to plot a route? And I'm going to say in show a local map. And this never works. I'm going to say, and it's saying website would allow to use my current location. I'm going to say OK. And then it always, always says that. So, so once you've clicked on that and it doesn't know where you are, you've got a magnifying glass. I think I can click and drag. No, I can't. It's a single click. So, so long as the magnifying glass exists, you're OK just doing a single click. So we're going to come down to pretty much where we are in the area. But once the magnifying glass has disappeared, I then use the scroll wheel on my mouse. So I'm scrolling in, scrolling in. I know we're slightly north of St Albans. There's Luton. There's Simmons Green and Nebworth. There's Hitchin. OK, so here's where I'm going to start my route at the windmill in Charlton. Now you have to have, if you're doing a brand new route, you have to have some idea of where you would like to go to, the, the main points of your route that you want to take in. And the reason for that, and you need at least five, if not six points on the route to start with. So I'm going to start, the first click when I'm creating a route is going to be the start point. So I'm going to click there in Charlton. And I'm going to say I'm going to head up to Great Offley and then I'm going to go down towards Warden Hill and I'm going to go up towards Barton de Clay and then I'm going to go through Shillington and maybe Lower Stondon and over to Alsey and up into Fairfield and into Letchworth and back down to the pub. One day it's going to be open again. The pub here. Boom. OK, so that's my route. That's the general feel for where I'm going to go. If I look up in the top right hand corner, I can see that it's currently, as the crow flies, 21.918 miles. If you click on that, it will go to kilometres for you. If you prefer kilometres. So 21.98 miles. OK, that's fine. That'll do me. I now need to finesse the route because obviously I can't ride as I have plotted so far. So I'm going to be using some of the tools on the left hand side. My favourite tool for this is to simply say replot section. OK, so this first section goes from the windmill up to Great Offley. So the first click is where are you replotting from? The second click is where are you plotting to? So I'm going to say I'm going to replot from there. I'm going to replot to there. OK, and then all I do is from the green point, I just start drawing a more accurate description of where I'm going to go. So I'm going to go along here. Now we know that the browns, brown dotted lines are bridleways and the green dotted lines are footpaths. So I'm going to stay with as much as I can the brown dotted lines. OK, I can zoom in as I'm doing this, coming up Chalk Hill. Yes, I understand where I am and you might not, but at least if you're following brown, then you know you're going to be OK. I'm going to come up to there and, and then along the road. And when I get near to that point at which I said to plot, replot to, I'm just going to stop 
happy in the knowledge that there's a straight line between my last point and the point at which I said to replot to. And when I'm happy with that, I go up to the top right hand corner and I click confirm. OK, I'm going to do that again because this time I'm going to look and I'm going to say, well, actually, I want to go up the high street, down there, along lower Luton Road and then up and down. I'm going to sneak down the bulk. So I'm going to replot from Great Offley to Lily. OK, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to replot section. I'm going to replot from there. To, and I can say, well, I'm going to end up down there because I'm going to come in. So I'm going to say two there. OK, so I'll now go in and I will replot down the lower Luton Road. I'm going along here. When you're on the road, you don't need to be super accurate because you know you're on the right road. I am going to get to that junction there that goes underneath the 505, round that corner there like that. Each click puts it into the middle as well it moves the map up here through that little coppice and then wee down the balk that's great fun if you've never done it certainly more fun than coming and going up it and then back down here turn in there heading towards my point at which i said plot two happy that there'd be a straight line click confirm OK, and that's all I would do all the way around. So in this instance, I'm going to carry on up this trail. This is one of those annoying ones that we can't really help ourselves on. Starts off as a bridleway, suddenly turns into a footpath, turns back into a bridleway. Look at that bridleway, beginning and end. You can't get to it. So we try our best when we're out there doing our windmilling. But we can't always account for the vagaries of the map and the ways in which these paths and bridle ways have developed themselves over the years so and as i'm making my changes from it being as the crow flies you'll have seen that my mileage indicator is going up I and mean, it's bound to go up because you're going from straight line to straight line to wiggle to wiggle so once you're happy let's say we've done that all the way around you've, you've done the same things all the way around um if you can't find a bridle way, then we just revert to a road. There's always a road that helps us link things up. Just try and avoid things like the A6 and the A505. So always try and stick to B roads, white roads or yellow roads. So once you're happy with your new route, you just click on save. You could have clicked on save at any time, by the way, so that you didn't accidentally put an hour's worth of work in and then have your internet connection go down. You can click on save, you can save the file name and then you can click on save again at any stage and just overwrite that just like you would do with any file on your computer. So I'm going to give this a name. I'm just going to call this Mike's test route for the sake of this. It's a public route. You can have up to five private routes in your plotter route, but plotter routes all about sharing. So let's make it public. What is it? It's a mix of road and off road. It's for cycling because it'd be a hell of a walk. And you can put some notes in there if you like. You just put my first test on plotter route. These either to help yourself when you're coming back and having a look at your route library in a year's time and think, what the heck was that one? Uh, you can save it in there and you just click save. Once you've saved it, it goes into your route library because you're logged in as you and you can then share that's the unique url that plotter root has generated for you so forward slash plotter root.com forward slash root that's the unique bit your route has been assigned 1169473 that's what that whole url you would share with somebody but if you were saying to them go on to plotter root you can find me at 1169473 and we can have a look at that now and there it is. That's what would be. Obviously, that wouldn't be straight lines anymore. It would be as wiggly as that. But that is what we would share with the windmillers. And how might you share that? Well, you can just go down here and you go share. And there's the URL. So you can just copy that and then go to Facebook or email, paste that in. Boom, you've shared. So I hopefully that was helpful. And that will show you how to. It was the same thing. I'm going to just quickly jump on to how to edit someone else's map now. So bear with me two seconds. 
Okay, so in this instance, I have just done a search in the plotter root search box for Bedford. And I found this one. No idea who Nigel Wilson is, but Nigel Wilson has very kindly shared a 25 mile route around Bedford. Okay, and I'm thinking, well, I, I might quite like to explore that. But 25 miles is not going to be, it's, it's too far. So all I need to do is go under hover over menu. I'm going to click on edit. That's going to bring up his route. And I'm going to have a look at that route and say, well, I'm not going to change the start and finish point, but I'm going to look for somewhere that I can fairly easily and obviously make his route a bit shorter if that indeed exists. So let's have a look. And I'm thinking that I can take out from Furley. I don't know any of these roads. This is just for an example. So from that, round about that 20 point marker, go down through Ravenshead and Reynold, cross Reynold Junction and rejoin it at Great Barford. I think that would take it down. It's currently 53.618 miles. Gosh, I misread that. So it's 53 miles. I definitely don't want to do that. So as before, we just need to go in here and replot section. I always, I mean, I like to do replot section. You could, you could choose shorten route, crop the start and the end of the route, reverse route, but replot section is one of the easiest things to, to do. So once we've clicked on replot section, I decided it was going to be from their route nearing maximum size, the route nearing you can save under the standard membership. Okay, well, I've not seen that notice before, but we're reducing the size, so hopefully. And then I'm just going to... Oh. So that wasn't a great example, was it? Because it's gone... Oh, it was that way around. My apologies. So you can see I'm learning as I go. I hadn't looked at the arrows. So despite me saying from there to there, plotter route automatically is saying, well, you're going this way around. OK, so we need to start from the green, which is fine. So we said we were going to go down here. And again, just roughly through there. I can tidy this up in detail, but this is going to give me an idea of how much shorter I've made his route. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to confirm. So it went to 56 to 52. So that's not nearly enough for me. So I think maybe I'm going to get rid of that great big section there as well. So again, I'm going to go to replot section and I go from there down to there. And I'm just going to go like this. Just Again, I would go in afterwards and just fine tune it. But from an overview point of view, this is absolutely fine. And then say confirm. We were at 52.81. Let's see what I've done. 47. I'm thinking, yeah, 47, that's fine. OK, so I've been back in. I've tied it up. Everything's just dandy. And I go to save it. And it says, uh oh. This isn't your route. It's owned by somebody else, which is fine. So I'm going to save a copy to my account like that. And I'm going to say I'm actually going to there's an option here to reduce points. It reduces the accuracy, but not by much. So I'm going to reduce the points as well. And where was the reduce points? Ah, miss this point. So up here on the top left, We've got that it's 2,203 points. Now, most modern Garmin's, or certainly my one, and a lot of other other of the range of Garmin's, will not take a route. They will, what they call, truncate the route if it's beyond 500 points. So you'll get the start, you'll get three quarters of the route, and then when it gets to 500 points on the route, it will stop. So the best thing to try and do is to reduce that down just by using this slider to just below... 500 points, 491. I'm going to go confirm. It won't have made any difference whatsoever, especially on a road ride. And then we can save. Uh, save copy to my account. I'm going to give it a uh, mics edit for test. If I can type. It's, so it looks like it's all on road and it's cycling and I can just make a little note to myself, delete this and then I'm going to save it. We can have a look at that. 
And then I would share that and say, look, I found this route in Bedford. It was 52 miles. I've reduced it down to, let's see when it finishes, 47 miles. No, it was 56 miles. It's now 47 miles. I've nicked 10 miles off it. That should be fine. And that is how you create a route, take someone else's route, and edit either of those. I hope that was helpful.